Okay, so I'm going to try to make this tutorial pretty quick because I have a test in the morning and my recording software has not been cooperating at all. So, uh, this is lesson one, redstone uh, powering, well, powering redstone. So, as you can see here, this is an unpowered redstone wire, as we call it. Here's a powered redstone wire. Uh, when you apply a torch to it, it'll power the redstone wire and it changes color to this red color and it'll emit particles and things. Um, you may be able to see here it fades a little bit as it goes from this side to this side, but I'll show you a better example of that later. Uh, this is the wooden pressure plate. Wooden pressure plate and the stone pressure plate both uh, apply current to the wire when you step on them. The only difference really is that the uh, wood pressure plate will activate when items or chickens um, go onto or are thrown onto the pressure plate. However, the stone pressure plates will not activate, as far as I know, as many items as there are. It doesn't matter how many they are, they don't add up weight like in real life. Um, however, it will turn on if you stand on it. Switches, if I don't destroy the switch, um, work by turning on and off uh, a redstone source. Kind of like they have a little redstone torch in them that can be turned on and off. Um, some components, like redstone torches, do change when they get power to the block they're on. However, that does not apply to switches. Switches can be placed in different orientations and be irrelevant of that. Their on state is not relative to the direction they're placed. Um, even though this does look like, oh, it's on when it's over there and it's off when it's on this side. That's not the case. Um, it can totally differ. Sometimes it'll be the way you want it to be, sometimes it won't be. You can put them on the side of blocks as well as on the top of blocks, as you can see here. And both this one and this one are on top of blocks, um, obviously. Uh, here you can see they work perfectly fine. If there's a component like these on a block, it will emit power out of the sides of the block. You can see here. Um, these um, switches will also emit power around themselves, but they do not emit power to these spots here. It's a good thing to note. Um, for example, if you were to have this like this and have another cable here, here, and here, that would emit power um, when on to those cables. So it's something to keep in mind so that you're not wondering why your circuit's not working later. Buttons, um, basically they just apply power and when you press them in, they stay in for a certain period of time. I'm only clicking it. I'm not holding my mouse button down or anything. I click it once, move my mouse button, and it stays. Um, there's an exact tick ratio to that, but I don't want to confuse you with too many numbers yet. Um, we'll go more de in depth into the exact timing of everything later on when we're dealing with circuits that have to do with the exact timing of things. Here you can see um, just a cable that is um, 15 in length. Uh, well, it's a bit longer than 15, but it's to show you the rule of 15. If you see here, um, this one is um, 19 long, and it's stopping on the 15th tile. You can see there's no more current here. If we go here and we put a line off the side, um, there isn't any more current with the little sparkly things. 
Now, if we go back, we can see if we place two, there's still current, but if we place one more, there's no more current anymore. Um, this is a universal law with redstone. It moves 15 blocks and dies. Um, no matter how it gets there, if it transfers through 15 um, blocks of redstone to get to the destination, no matter how far it is from the actual torch, it will die. For example, if we go over and then we go back, we can see this is only two blocks away, but it's still dead because it had gone 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then it dies on the 16. Now, an example of this is this big array of redstone. When I place the redstone torch down, it illuminates the array. The array. Now, when we go and we go to the 15th block here, you can see, okay, it goes 15 blocks. That makes sense. Now, you may ask why this just goes in a straight line instead of a circle, because we've got an array of blocks, right? Because Minecraft is inherently block related. It doesn't deal with actual straight lines, um, so you can't put anything on a diagonal. These blocks connect to the sides of other blocks. For example, here, if we count to the edge, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, you can see that we get to our source. No matter how you count this out, as long as you count it in an optimal way, when you get to the end, it'll always be 15. If it's if you don't count it in an optimal way, it can end up more than 15, because you could count it kind of in an odd way, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, which obviously it's not actually having to move 17, because... If I show you over here, we can introduce a new source, and now that current reaches here, because to that source, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, it's only 11 to this source. And you can see all of our wires are now illuminated. Um, this isn't as useful as it looks, because the sources are independent of each other. If this one's here and this one gets turned off, then it's still going to stay on. Whereas, if we only have the one source and we turn it off, then it completely turns off. And that concludes uh, what I have for you on the basics of powering redstone. I hope to see you in later lessons. So rate, subscribe, and send comments, because comments and subscriptions and ratings and such do um, encourage me to make more of these tutorials. Otherwise, I might get bored and stop making them.